So I have this bowl that it's kind of broken. I was using it to mix up my cement when I would do like my cement projects. I would just mix it in here. But since then, I've gotten a new bowl. This bowl is from Dollar Tree. It's seen better days. So I'm just going, I'm not really going to clean it up because these are just like stain marks from my projects and things like that. I'm actually going to take some clay and kind of rework this bowl so it's a cute decorative bowl. Let's get started. I am using air dry clay that I got from Hobby Lobby. I just got it really, really wet so that I was able to mold and shape it how I wanted. Based on the picture that you probably saw when you clicked on the video, you probably know what I'm doing here. I'm actually shaping out a mouth. I wanted to create a face on the bowl because I was inspired by this picture here that I found. I think it was on Instagram. Now because this bowl is super top heavy because of the eyes, on the back side of the bowl I just started putting some clay to kind of like weigh this part down. So I'm just taking clay and I'm packing it just flat like this and just pushing it into the bowl. And I'm going to just kind of blend it into the bowl so that way I don't have to use a lot of clay throughout the whole piece. So I just went over it with a little bit of water just to kind of smooth any little imperfections out. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry slowly. Okay, I will put a plastic bag over this and come back in about 24 hours to see what happened. Hopefully nothing cracks off and breaks, but if it does, that's the name of the game with air dry clay. Hopefully that does not happen though. I'm gonna slowly let it dry. Then from there, I probably will go over the whole piece with plaster to really add in the texture where I didn't from the clay. I just went ahead and went over the whole thing with plaster. It did crack in some spots, but I'm just gonna leave that because it gives like an overall really spooky effect. Like this is a mummy. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some more plaster to do the inside and then this bowl will be done. I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll show you the results here in a second. Creepy. I picked up four packages of these decorative fillers. They're just these foam skulls. You get 12 in a bag. Now these skulls have some sparkles on them and I wanna remove those as best as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash these in the sink. Alright, so after our little skulls are rinsed off, we still have a little bit of glitter on them, but that's totally fine. We're going to end up painting over this anyway, and it will cover the glitter. The next thing I want to do is just kind of push these eyes and the mouth in just a little bit to kind of recess them. 
not focusing, I don't know, a bit too bright. So I'm just gonna take the back of a paintbrush and I'm pushing it like in and just twisting it little by little and then kind of up. I'm trying not to break the foam or crack it, but we just want like a hole. If you have a heat tool that can do this a lot better and melt the foam, that'd be probably best to do it with a, like a heating tool. So the eyes are pushed in like that. And I wanna do the same with the mouth area. I'm just gonna lightly in carefully. You don't want to break the foam so that the mouth is like pushed in a little bit like this. I just think it looks a little bit creepier. If you don't wanna do this step, you can totally skip this and just leave it like a skull. I just think this kind of looks a little bit creepier. For example, you could use the tip of your hot glue gun and just insert the hole. Just be careful that you don't burn your fingers. So you could totally do this. And like that's what the result will look like. So it looks like this thing's holding its mouth open and like screaming or something. I'm just trying to make it a bit spookier. So I had saved a few of these branches from some other floral picks. I just took the leaves and stuff off. These were from Hobby Lobby originally. I don't remember exactly what floral was on this, but I picked everything off for a different project and I saved these. So I'm just basically going to take one of these and then we're just going to glue it on. Or you could just poke it in. You don't even necessarily need to glue it. Just poke it in like this and it should stay for you. But if you want to be safe, you could put a little bit of hot glue. And then you will know it's secure on there. So I'm going to go through and just start hot gluing them randomly on wherever. So the idea here is to make this look like it's a piece of floral, some type of floral. And then when you get pretty close, then you notice, oh my gosh, those are little heads. How fun. So we are going to end up painting over all of this. But here's the overall look so far. I got a couple done of these picks. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest off camera and then we'll get to painting. Yay, they're all completed and they look spooky. All right, so for painting wise, I'm gonna go over these with this golden brown. I got this from Michaels. It's by Craftsmart. It's just acrylic paint. I believe it is matte. It should be matte because I picked up mattes only when I picked up paint. So I don't really know, but hopefully it's more of a matte. But we're gonna go over each skull with this color. So pretty, it's a pretty brown. Just coat the whole entire skull. And then we'll go back through to get those little like details, the insides of the eyes and the mouth area. And it's totally fine to get it on the stem. That's gonna make it look even more natural. So don't be afraid to do that. And if you wanted to kind of brush it on the stem like this, I would, I would do that just to make it look more real. So here is the overall piece. And you can tell like with the added shading on the stem, it looks really, really good. So now I'm gonna go through, it's still kind of wet, but I'm gonna use this antique wax. I used in my last video, but I really, really like this. If you can find this at Michael's, I, I would get it. It's the same brand, Craft Smart. It's, an, it's literally called antique wax and it's not a paint, it's a wax. So I'm just gonna put it into the eye area. Kind of, I'm using a different brush. Poke it down in like that. And because it's a wax, it's kind of like a translucent color, I guess. You can kind of like go over your piece a little bit and then like rub it off or rub it in. It doesn't like turn it completely brown. How cute is that? This is gonna look so good when it's done. You can add some wax on here if you want to, but that's the overall kind of look that we're going for. And if you wanna do the dark on the nose, you can do that as well, but I'm not going to. I mean, like, here's what it would look like if you did not push the hole in the mouth or anything. You could go through and just do the eyes, just leave it like a skeleton. I left a couple like that just cause I didn't wanna do every single one and it's not like you're gonna notice anyway. They do look really good as like skulls as well. So here's like the difference. This one has more depth with the mouth and everything. It looks a bit more creepier. And this one you can tell it's like a straight up skull. So I don't know, I, I like this one better because it has that depth in there.
Perfect. Three, two, one, go. What am I supposed to say? Oh, what are we doing? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Working on the clay. Oh, okay. I, I get it. Oh, yeah. Working on the top. And, yeah. That looks pretty good. Uh, what are we doing again? Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. Working side to side. It looked pretty good. Oh, yeah. That's pretty handsome. I don't know about that. <laughs> So yep, that's exactly what I did, minus the twerking and side to side, but now I'm going to be working on the bottom half of this vase. Now I have the vase completed and shaped out how I want it, I just need to let this sit and dry and then I can paint it. So it is the next day, it is dry, it is ready to be painted. And you guys know I'm using more baking soda mixed in with paint. I just love doing that. So I just mix those together. I did black and then I went in with a brown. And on top of that, I just used a lighter brown and I kept building layer after layer. And here is how my little vase came out. I just love it so much. And this is going to be all year round, not just for Halloween. So I wanted to do another vase, which you might have saw it in that previous clip there. It's this red one here. I also thrifted for a couple dollars. I wanted to turn this into a pitcher that had more of like a bird's beak as the pitcher part um, or whatever it's called. I don't know. The little spout, I guess, where the water comes out. To get started with this piece, I'm going to take some clay and roll it into the size of my pinky, about that width. I'm going to shape it into a crescent shape to create the handle for this new pitcher. And then for the spout to the new pitcher, I just shaped a tooth-like shape, put it on there. Now I'm going to take a pencil and just draw out this line to create the bird's beak as well as a little nostrils for it. Once these pieces were dried, I just took some wood glue and I glued them on because they did fall off. I already started to prime it here with some paint. I'm just going to go through and spray the whole thing with a matte black and then I'm going to texturize it with some paint. So that's all I'm really going to do here. And as always, I'm using my flat black primer by Rust-Oleum. We don't need to fully coat this, just one thin coat. I got the quick little coat on here. I'm just going to go ahead and start mixing up some random paint. So I just put in like a yellow and a brown and I'm mixing those together. We're just going to add some texture to this. And I'm going to add in baking soda, of course. I kind of like it, this rust color. And look at the bird's beak. How cool is that? I think I might leave it like this. I don't know. I kind of like it, this color. So I left it that color.
So I found this lovely pot from Goodwill. I think I got it half price of this. I thought this would be great to make a little cauldron from this pot. I love the detail on the sides. I do want to add some rings right here though. So what I plan on doing right now is just drill a hole right through this space right there to the other side and then I'm going to add some rings. I got these from Dollar Tree. They're just those little clip rings. I'm going to put some clay or something around it so it doesn't look like this. I have a thick enough kind of drill bit. I'm just going to go ahead and drill through there. Let's see if I can get this and not hurt myself. It was a success. I am wearing a mask, by the way. Oh, I guess not. It chipped on the side. Um, oops. I'll just put some clay or whatever right there to, you know. Now, the reason I wanted to use these rings is because they snap apart. And then I'd be able to hook them into here. Snap them back together. And then I could just start put packing clay, like, around this thing. Mm, maybe about that much. So right now, I'm actually just putting the clay where that piece chipped off. I'm just going to fill that in first, and then I'll go in and put clay all around my ring. It's not that easy. I can't get the clay inside the hole, so I'm just going to have to do the best I can like this and go around it. Because I want this to still be able to move up and down. So I think this is kind of what I'm going to do. Alright, so, and then with the other part of the clay, I wanted to make, like, little feet that go on the bottom of this. So it kind of props it up a little bit. Kind of curve it like that and then attach this part to the bottom. Now, I can't really do that right this minute just because these pieces need to dry. I'm going to show you on the side here. <laughs> but it's going to be like this on the bottom side. Like, tilted outwards a little bit. And I'll have four of them that go around. So that is the foot. I want to make sure my four feet are going to work. I'll just put them like this and then lay something kind of flat on top. Just to make sure when it is on the bottom that the pot will be level. So I'll just kind of push down on it like that. And I'll let it dry. Alright, so these pieces all dried. I actually made one more off camera. I'm gonna do five. I kind of shaped them so they look like teeth or something like that, but they'll be fun once we get them glued on and painted. These ended up drying pretty good. I went over with a little bit of glue just to secure everything so it won't like fall off or anything like that. This one moves around, the other one doesn't. Overall, I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna glue on my little, my little feet. We'll call them feet. So in order to glue these on, I'm going to be using a combination of a couple glues. I will be using the tacky glue. It's an all-purpose glue that's from Dollar Tree. I think it will work really well. I'm also going to be using a super glue. Now, I've never showed this on my channel, and it's not sponsored as well. But this is by Star Bond. It's a premium super glue. My friend, Christine from Texas, thank you so much for sending this to me. Shout out to you. I've used it in a couple projects, but I've never showed you guys. I love this glue. I really do it it literally dries so fast it is black but it's fine because we're gonna be painting it black anyway so i might need to clear that out with a needle or something but because it's super glue this might be glued shut you might need to use your teeth to open up the super glue. but luckily they give you several pieces to use because they know that stuff happens they even have precision applicators. It's a little dusty because that's all from the glue. <laughs> and it gets a little messy. I've been using the same one over and over. So if there's a little thing right here, I just poke it out with a needle. So the hole will still be there. So I'll just take a needle and shove it down through there. And it will create the little hole. As soon as I'm done using it, I go and rinse this immediately. So I wanted to just show you this. Again, I just took a needle and just popped it out. And look how clean the inside is well, i'm gonna put this on so i just took the tacky glue and i put two dots and then i would put the super glue and i just put all of them in place and this is ready to be spray painted that matte black primer i use this for almost all my projects after the spray paint dried then i took some black paint from dollar tree i mixed in some baking soda and then i just pounced it all over the pot including the parts that you see right here that i didn't even spray paint Yes, I touched those as well with this. I'm so sorry I don't have a reveal video for this, but this is what it looks like. I love how the little handles turned out, and that texture is so beautiful. Just by stippling on some black paint with baking soda mixed in, 
So I think overall it looks really nice. Here's the little feet. I still have to glue one on. It fell off. Should I take the feet off? I kind of don't like them. Leave a comment down below. But I will have these displayed in my home decor when I decorate for Halloween. So stay tuned for that video. It's coming out soon. That's my little cauldron I made. Sorry, I wish I had a better video of this thing, but... That's what it looks like. So the next project I wanted to do was make over these pumpkins I got from, or these jack-o'-lanterns I got from Michaels. I wanted to add on to the stem with a little bit of clay. I just think it would look a bit more whimsical if I did something like kind of spiraling up or something like that and kind of give my own unique take to it. This one lights up, so I think that's fun. This was about eight or nine dollars or something from Michaels. I got another one as well. I actually got another one on top of this, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that one. So here's the other one I got. This one's made of plaster. It's pretty heavy. And this one you just light a candle and put this on on top of the candle. This one's pretty thick. thick. Again, I want to change up the stem a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and add some air dry clay to those. Okay, so I'm going to do this this way where I take little sections and roll them together. I just rolled the clay and I rolled them in different sizes. The first one was the size of my thumb, then the second one was the size of my pinky, and then the other one was the size of a worm. So once you got a chunk kind of going on, and then I can just pack these together, get this situated on my jack-o'-lantern how I want. It's not gonna be this long, I'm just showing, showing you guys. <laughs> Actually, it did end up being that long. Like blend it down in, you know? Just start like twisting this. How fun is this? <laughs> I love that. I think that's cute. Smooth out what I can. And then I just took a pair of scissors to carve out the lines to blend the clay right into the plaster and it looks seamless. So the other one, I was just gonna just add on a little bit more to the stem, kind of going up like that is what I was thinking. So I'm just gonna adjust it accordingly. Okay, I gotta let these dry now. They're my bags and I, I took something out and look, <laughs> Mitra wants to be inside the bag. <laughs> She's so funny. I don't know what my cat's obsession is with bags. They also like, I had a box over here. They were just hopping inside. Apparently it's comfortable. So here is the other little precious jack-o'-lantern I never showed you guys. Again, I got this from Michaels for about 8 or $9. I thought it was so cute. I just love the stacked pumpkins and their faces are just adorable. So I didn't want to change the stem on this one because I like how it looks. So I'm just going to paint this. At first I wanted to leave it white, but I'm thinking I want to do more of a green, like a muted green. I'm going to get mix in some colors. So I have this moss green I'm going to probably mix this in here. It's really pretty. Ooh. Then maybe add in a little bit of this matte tan. Oh my, this is... So after I mixed that up, I just didn't like it, so I added some yellow, and then it was more the color I was looking I for. I think that's more what I'm looking for. And this is the moment where I messed up. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, this turned out so good, so just keep on watching. The top one, I'm going to do a slightly lighter green. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the top, the little pumpkin, and I'm just going to squirt in a little bit of white with a little bit of yellow to lighten this up to get a variation in the green. So pretty. I might need to use a different brush to be more precise. It's like a slight variation. I might go a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to try to paint the inside the same lighter color. <laughs> this will be complicated. Now as for these guys, so this one here and this baby, I'm going to use a little bit of baking soda because I want to blend in like these cracks and stuff. I want those to blend in so it looks seamless. I'm just going to use the same colors and just add colors. So I think I'm going to add in some deep brown. Oh my gosh, why does paint go all over the place? All over my shirt. Ugh. Okay, then I'm going to add in this yellow and a little bit of red. Just warm this up a bit. Okay, and then we'll add in our baking soda. Okay, that brown's going to be like the base color for the stems. And then we'll go in with a, more of an 
kind of an orangey color. I am going to add some detail on these stems so they won't be this solid poopy brown. <laughs> So now I'm using that same brown, I'm just squirting in a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, mixing it up, and this is the color I got. It's like this beautiful, tan, caramely color. Now I'm going to mix in some red with the color. I'm just kind of getting variation, you know. I don't want everything looking exactly the same. It's not exactly what I'm going for, so I'm going to add in some more yellow and red. I'm just going to quickly show you guys. They're still drying. I don't have enough time to let them dry and get this video out for you guys. So I'm just trying to hurry and quickly show you. But you would just, you know, put a candle in there and light it up. I'm so sorry I don't have a finished reveal video for you. But this is what it looks like. There's a little bit of this lighter green throughout. I just took my brush from this one and just dabbed it all over to give some variation. And there's these fun little stretch marks, you know, from the pumpkin, like these lines to make it look more real. That's just because the way I painted it with the brush going the strokes up and down. So you want to do that first and then dabble on some lighter color just to... Oh, I missed a spot. There's the cute little pumpkins. I think they're so fun with the green color. And the stem is like kind of a lighter, it's actually this color over here. And these ones again are still drying, but I don't have enough time to get this video out. It's more of a, uh, it's like a tan brown, I don't know how to explain the color. But this one has baking soda mixed in. I painted the inside of it as well. And then the stem is a really pretty chocolate brown. And I just took the same color and just you know, put some highlights on it. But I think it's cute overall, and I'm loving these colors together. Here's this one. You can still see the cracks from the clay on it. I'm just gonna leave it, though. I might have to go over these ones one more time with another coat of color, but I love this caramel color. It's so pretty. Like, this, like, light, tannish tone. So there's my pumpkin. Sorry about the mess. It is what it is, so... There's the jack-o'-lanterns. I think they turned out so cute. Let me know what you think. For this next project, I picked up a couple of these cloches from Dollar Tree. So I thought these were fun. I'm just going to put some moss. I also got some moss. So I got this reindeer moss from Dollar Tree as well. And I have a little bit of this old dried up moss. So I wanted to mix these together. Still like kind of wet. <laughs> just going to sniff it really well. Oh my. Ooh. Not sure if you should use this for crafts. And I'm gonna see if I can hot glue it and then put some of the dried stuff on top, just mix them together. I have these bag of roaches, 40 different ones in there. <laughs> That's what they look like. I have those to play around with. I also have this skull that I got from, I don't know, a festival. It's on a necklace. I had it for a long time and I'm like, this would be really cool to like pop down in, like laying in there. We'll see what I do with it. I don't know if I wanna remove this part. It has this green feather. I tried to like remove most of it, but it's, I don't know what to do with that. And then I also have like a fake skeleton head that I figured I could paint. I could paint these little hands. I don't know, like on its face, like this maybe, like it's screaming. And then I had one of those little birds, like little black crow sitting on top of the head. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm just going to play around with some stuff and see what I come up with. I do think I want to paint this though. So I'm going to do that right now while my hot glue gun's heating up. I want them to look more like this, like a, like a dingy yellowy. So I am going to mix in a little bit of that yellow and then maybe some tan and some white. Okay. That was a lot of paint. <laughs> I'm just gonna like go over it, just dab it on there. Just trying to like wipe some of it away. Then I'm also gonna go over it with a little bit of my brown like antique wax. I just love using this stuff. I think it just adds a little bit of dimension or something like that. I'm just gonna take a smaller brush and really work that in the eye area, the nose across the teeth like anywhere where it's recessed I'm gonna place it over these little bumps 
I think that looks so much better than the original color that it was. I think it'd look even more real if I got rid of the lines where it was made. <laughs> Get those off to the side. Back to this. And then I wanted to add like maybe a little bit of... Okay, and then I wanted my skull to be like sitting upright like that. I'm gonna like take some of this moss and push it into the jaw area. And then I kind of open his mouth a little bit and I'm gonna push this in the mouth. And then I tried to put the little crow on here and it just didn't work. It wouldn't close okay, right. The bird thing might not work. <laughs> Maybe I'll put the hands on here. And then maybe I'll just glue a little cockroach or something like, and we can close this up it backwards. That's how it turned out. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna make another one with the skeleton hands. Oh yeah, I forgot about the other skull head thing I had. This little thing. I ended up doing the same type of thing with the base. I used both mosses. And then I wanted to put a little hand down first and then this little skeleton head on top of the hand. Kind of like the hand is holding the head or something. And that's what I did. So I'm attempting to make a video for you guys and I went out on my porch and found this guy hanging from the doorway. And I brought him inside thinking like maybe he'll come back to life. I just feel so bad because I'm not sure what's going on with the poor, the poor guy, but I didn't want to turn flash on. I didn't want to like scare him or anything like that. Boom! I put him in this little, you know, the coffin dish thing that I had from the previous video. Oh, David, that's fitting. He's in a coffin and he's dying. I figured he could live in here amongst my plants, but I feel like my cats would eventually find him and kill him. So I'm not really sure what to do with this thing, but I just feel terrible because it's like, <laughs> barely moving he's like falling over please help me and i just don't know what to do anyways i gotta get into the video but i might put him back outside it's kind of chilly out so i'm not sure if, how much longer he'll live just feel really bad <laughs> Okay, so I picked this up from the thrift store for only, what, $2.99? Yep, $2.99 for this piece, and I thought it would be so cool as a jar or something that would hold something spooky. I don't I thought the top of it was great. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick coat of matte black spray paint and then maybe add some texturing. I don't know. But overall, that's pretty much all I'm going to do. And it's just going to be a fun, spooky piece for Halloween. So here's my piece. I got it all nice and cleaned. Now I'm just going to go ahead and spray it with the flat black primer that I've been using throughout the video. Just spritz it on there. And that is all we're going to do. It's just matte black and the lid. So you can put whatever in there. I think that's so fun for Halloween. Nice thrift flip there. Only $3. And you can go through and texturize this if you wanted to. I think I'm going to have some moss kind of hanging out the side when I decorate with it. So I'm just showing you guys the end result here.
And if you want to see how I use these in my Halloween styling decor, make sure you hit that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss how I decorate my home for this Halloween. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, my friends.